and like that the MG ZDT is gone to be replaced by another performance estate, an E61 BMW M5. Now, you guys will have probably seen this car already on the Drive Tribe channel in numerous episodes and I must apologise, it's been super hectic since really the start of the year, ever since my Aaron vlog with the MG. Drive Tribe has just changed a lot since then, we've really been working so hard in the first half of the year, so I've not really had a chance to update you guys with everything that's going on and a lot has changed in my personal life as well. But let's start with the Beamer. It's a serious step up from the MG. I wanted another estate car and where best to start than a 5 litre V10. I still can't quite believe when I start this up in the morning that just outside my new flat is a 500 horsepower naturally aspirated V10 car. It has always been a dream of mine to drive and own a V10 road car and I guess this is one of the easiest entries into that and we seem to have found a good one and it's just even cooler that it's the estate one. Now there is a bit of a story there. You guys will probably have seen on Drive Tribe that I initially was going to go for an M6. I test drove an M6 up in Darlington because I thought that would be a bit different. Everyone would want you to go for the E60 saloon and I just thought E61, the Touring, was simply out of our price range because we wanted to go for a really cheap V10 daily, essentially. So I test drove an M6, but then this one came up. Mr. Vanos, which is where the M6 came from, and who we've worked with loads in the recent few months, owned this E61 M5, which had a slightly checkered history, which means it's not quite worth what a full-blooded nice clean history E61 is. They are going for like 40 grand now and we got this for, I don't know if I exactly how much it was, but cheap. In case you guys aren't familiar with this car, it's carbon black, even though it's navy blue to my eyes. It's got the alloys that you want. Really happy that we've got them instead of the ones that have fewer spokes and just look a wee bit weird. Um, it's the full 5 litre S85 V10 from BMW. It's a 2007 car and it did have a very small fire in the back right of the boot. So that led to the interior getting singed and the thing that essentially wrote off the car, is it open? It is now. The thing that basically wrote off the car was the Alcantara roof lining. Now my sunroof is out now because it's a lovely day, but this is all Alcantara. So when the sunroof closes, all Alcantara front to back. And once that got licked by the flames, it financially wrote off the car. So really, it was just some interior trim that needed sorting and this car was back on the road, but the insurance company wanted to get rid of it. I have filmed a couple of vlogs with this car since I've owned it, so they'll be coming on the channel very soon. You can always tell it's an M5 by the four exhaust tips and of course the M5 badge on the back, but it is a proper Q car. Nobody notices this at all unless they're a drive tribe watcher. I can turn up to my local golf club or Sainsbury's or wherever and completely get away with this 500 horsepower V10 Super Estate. Everyone just thinks it's a 5 Series. Now, I have made a choice which has kind of remedied that. We'll get to that later in this video. I kind of want to shout a wee bit more because it's my first proper, you know, performance, high horsepower car and I kind of want to chat to people about it. So the fact that this kind of goes under the radar is very cool. And I know for a lot of you, that's exactly what you would go for. It is cool. I won't lie, but as I say, there's a remedy to the lack of reaction that I'll chat about later in the video. So we bought a super cheap M5 Touring and the plan was to do all the work that needs done to it and make it a minter. Now, <laughs> what's slightly annoying is we've done that very, very quickly. Almost in one episode, all the little essentials, rod bearings, injectors, everything that could go wrong on this V10 car was sorted. And then I was thinking, right, well, let's change the colour, let's switch it to a manual, let's do some cool stuff with it. But the drive drive audience has basically told me to keep it exactly as it is, which is slightly frustrating. 
basically it means we've bought too good an M5. For content wise and for YouTube, you want to get the worst one possible and then really bring it back from being a dog to being a really nice example. Well, we've bought one for super cheap and it's just really solid. You guys may have seen the video where we put this on the dyno and it's creating more horsepower than it apparently did from factory. That's silly. So I put it to you guys. I said, let's change the color. Everyone went mental. No, keep it exactly how it is. The color suits it. Okay, cool. So in the future, we're gonna paint protect it, but that's kind of one video gone. I wouldn't want to tune it. There's people saying you can supercharge it, but it's fragile enough an engine already. So I wouldn't want to mess with it. The one thing that we could do is manual swap it. There's a company just up north that manual swaps these. They put, I think, the manual gearbox from the M3 into this instead of the actual one from over in America. But that's a story for another day. But again, the audience said, no, don't do it. It'll ruin the car for what it is and it'll affect the value. That final bit is actually incorrect. It actually does increase the value. If you go on collecting cars and you look at the manual M5 two rings recently, they've gone for more than the standard ones. So there is still potential for that. It will never get old popping the bonnet and looking at this engine bay. What a design. There is a plan for this, which if you guys have watched our dyno video, Eventuri, you'll know all about. And speaking of Eventuri, the one mod that's happened to the Beamer so far, these carbon intakes, and my God, if the induction sign wasn't already awesome, these have made it even better. Anyway guys, I'm very sorry for the delay, but welcome to the channel, an E61 M5 Touring. Now I did see earlier there's some personal news as well and it's related to all that stuff over there. I've moved. Behind me here is the beautiful city of Bath. I was originally in London and you will have seen me uh, arriving and leaving from my flat and a few videos on this channel. I've now moved to a city that reminds me a lot of my home. It reminds me of Edinburgh but about a third of the size lovely Georgian buildings and just the pace of life is like half what it was in London. That's one reason why I've moved. The other reason is because we're filming a lot more with Richard Hammond. Richard Hammond has really grabbed Drive Tribe by the scruff of the neck and is absolutely nailing it. We're having such a great 2022 so far and Richard, as most of you will know, basically lives on the Welsh border. So if I was to commute there, you know, two or three times a week from London, that's a three and a half, four hour drive every, that's, sorry, three and a half, four hour drive there and then back. So yeah, it's just, it wasn't the call. So I had to move. So to be closer to Richard and keep things much more convenient, I've moved as far west as I was willing to go. I could have gone all the way to Bristol, but that is beautiful. So I thought I'd take you guys around my new little flat because I'm pretty happy with the, the little place that I found. The great thing about this car, I hope you can hear it, is even at 20 miles an hour in my village, you can still get morsels of that V10. And that's what I think makes a great car. The fact that it puts a smile on your face no matter what speed you're going, whether you're literally trundling around at 20, or if you're going triple figures on an autobahn, that is when you've bought a good one. Okay, I'm not breaking the speed limit and it's making that noise. Fantastic. So the first big change has been the switch to the M5 from the MG and the second big change is my new place in Bath. Come on in. Now I have just moved in here so it's not too much to look at just now, it's all a bit bare. But it's a little one bedroom, does me just fine and it's actually much nicer than the place I had in London. It is a complete new flat. I'm the first person to stay in here which has been really nice. There's no damp or shabby bits or anything. 
everything in here is absolutely brand new and I'm the first person to use anything in this flat. So I'm going to give you guys a very quick tour and then I've got a little job I need to do before the final part of this video. So this is essentially my one main room, living room and kitchen all in one. I am here by myself, me and my girlfriend, uh, she's now got work up in Nottingham and obviously my work took me west to here so we're kind of switching between there. So this is very much a one bed for one person, hence nice little kitchen, all absolutely brand new, far too nice to be honest for the stuff I'm going to be making on it. I've literally used the oven three times I think, I've been here a few weeks now. Um, so yep, yeah, transition to living room sofa i need something to go here for the sofa to face so i'm thinking a sort of small table here with a television or to be honest i don't really watch television so just somewhere to sit my laptop but i have got wi-fi i've been hot spotting for quite a few weeks now thank you bt for putting that one in uh little shelving unit here that's carried over from my place in london tell me you drive a v10 bmw without telling me you drive a v10 bmw uh, I've got a bit of car influence going, made it onto this window sill here, this one's a bit bare, I've not figured out that one yet, and there's some models too in the bedroom as well. The stuff I'm most proud of is all from a company called the Futon Company, so actually if I go back to my entranceway, this little shoe rack down here that perfectly fits, how nice is that? And then I think my favourite thing in the flat, my ladder desk. That's what they call this. This is basically where I spend my days when I'm not on shoot. It would be nice to be facing a window, but I really like this desk layer. Really simple shelving, and I've kept it fairly clean. So I've got plants up the top, and then my little hobbit hole right here, and my chanter resting behind it, so that when I need a bit of time away from the laptop, just get the chanter and play a few tunes. Then if you've ever been to the best service station in the UK called T-Bay Services, you might have seen one of these. This is a lovely poof, I think is what these are called. And that is literally made from one of the sheep on the farm at T-Bay. It's absolutely amazing and will just be used for occasional sitting when there's not enough room on the sofa once the TV's in. So it's kind of like, I guess, a small L shape here. Uh, this guy here is Moo Moo. Bottom went in London for a, a bit of home. Nice little Highland cow. And I think I'm going to carry him with me, although a dog did get into the London flat and ripped off his left hoof. So that's a job for the future. Poor Moo Moo. Uh, very quickly show you my bathroom. There it is, toilet, sink, nice rain shower, big fan of those. And then, final room is my bedroom. So this was my bed from London. I am still living out of a suitcase. There's going to be a chest of drawers here that will put all of that away into my sports bag. Uh, this was again from Futon Company. They basically specialise in small furniture, specifically for, you know, they're very popular in London for small flats and it was the exact same for this place here. Perfect for one bed. So I recommend if you live by yourself or just have a small place, the Futon Company, definitely check them out. So easy to put together and it houses all of my clothes in a one. So very happy with that. And then, I don't think this video will be out yet, but this here is my massive terrarium built by the legends at Babylon Terrarium. Uh, this is basically a little jungle in a jar. Um, it's quite hard to see through the condensation, but you can see a little, little bridge through there. I've got a little bonsai tree here, and there's a little cave in there. It's so cool, and it's its own little ecosystem. A little water cycle going, you can see the condensation up here, that then falls down, feeds the plants, CO2, oxygen, it's all in there. Oh, I forgot, there's a little rope swing just hanging off the bonsai tree there. Very cool. So, yeah, this whole place is nice and simple. Nothing much to it. But there is one more job to do. You may notice the walls are completely bare and there's some pictures down on the floor. So let's chat through them 
and get them up. So this guy here is Louie, I guess what I could call the family dog. So he's going to be going up there. We've got my favourite race car and actually the car that I did my first ever drive drive video on. This lovely painting of a Jaguar XJR9 1988 Le Mans winner. Then my production guys gave me this awesome framed picture of me and Gordon Murray um, when it was the launch of the T70. Uh, you know, they were saying that, you know, you can't really take these things for granted. You were literally there at the launch of what you could say was a, a future McLaren F1. So it's definitely worth, you know, a little signature in there as well. Um, I think this one will go in the bedroom, but I need to chat to you guys about what's in here. So guys, today's video is sponsored by the guys at Limited 100 and they've sent me this. Now if you guys know your race cars, you will know that this is an artwork of a Porsche 919 hybrid LMP1 car. And if you've been following Drive Drive for, oh, it has to be more than three years now, you might know that my first big video was on this car. It was an engineering video about the V4 engine that was in the Porsche 919. Now when the guys at Limited 100 gave me a shout saying they'd like to be involved in a video and they asked what picture I would like from their catalogue. So I hopped onto their website and there's a whole bunch of different car marks on there and also different themes like Bond cars. They mostly deal in classics. I initially looked for a V10 BMW, I wanted to find an E61 somewhere, but that's not quite classic enough. So I went straight to the race car section and found this amazing piece of art, such an awesome picture of a 919 in an environment that I've never seen it in before. Now the whole point in Limited 100 is that there's only a hundred of each picture and each print is derived from an original piece of artwork and the original artist signs it down there and you'll have your number out of 100. So for mine, I'm 22 out of 100, 22 being my lucky number. In your package, they'll also send a certificate of authenticity so that you know that your artwork is one of that 100. It's all signed, it's all pretty cool. So I'm gonna put this up on the wall and it's just gonna turn this place around from looking a bit like a office or hospital to a proper home. And this is my first proper sponsored video on my personal channel. So it's quite a big deal for me. So it would mean the world to me if you guys click the link either in the description or the top comment and checked out Limited 100's website and just had a look around to see what they've got. And if you do find a picture that you fancy, be it of a BMW, Alfa Romeo, a Mini, a Morgan, a Bugatti, a Porsche, then use my exclusive discount code FERNY10 to get 10% off your purchase. That's F-E-R-N-I-E 10 and you'll get 10% off your purchase. There's also free UK shipping and also free shipping if your order is over 500 pounds. So click the link in the description or the top comment, check out what they have. And if you do fancy one of those pictures, use the discount code FERNY10 and you could have something as cool as this up on your wall. Right, let's get this thing mounted. I've been told you have to hold it for 30 seconds. Looking good though. How cool does this look up on the wall? There's still plenty of white space to fill up now with my other pictures down here. But yeah, a good start. What a difference that makes to the flat, just living in it already. The hospitalness is gone, just having this stuff on the wall. So we've got our 919, we've got Louis up there, we've got the XGR9 just here, and then in the bedroom we've got Gordo Buzz there and then actually I didn't show you guys this one it, this isn't actually mounted I 
didn't make the mistake of not putting them at the right height, that isn't permanent. That's actually really cool. It's a schematic of a Jaguar Group C car, um, but that's just hanging on a television plug-in bit. So yes, that will go up there proper height soon. But yes, the flat is looking so, so much better. And a massive thank you to Limited 100 for sponsoring today's video. So we've done new car number one, we've done new flat, now it's time for new car number two. Again, if you're a Drive Tribe subscriber, you'll know exactly what this is. We've now got a Dodge Charger Hellcat wide body. I don't know what's happened that this is the result, but I'm okay with it. So the BMW belongs to Drive Tribe. We have bought it, but this is what's called a long-term loan car. Kind of similar to the Focus ST that I had on the channel, um, I guess about a year ago now. This is essentially the replacement for that. So this is my proper daily. And if you know what the Hellcat engine is, you will know the stats of this. 707 horsepower, rear wheel drive, 6.2 litre supercharged Hemi V8. Unreal. Now a massive thank you has to go to these lads down here, AEC. They are the importers of Dodge and Ram into Europe and they're looking to expand into the UK as well. Hence why they've given us this. It was supposed to only be for three months, but now we've got it for an entire year. I've had it for about a month and a half now, so we're already a chunk into that time, but we've done, uh, I think, three videos with it now. We've done a reveal on Drive Tribe, we've done Richard Hammond driving it, and we've also featured it in a couple of videos with influencers coming to the smallest cog. So you guys may have seen a few videos with this car in it. The guys at AEC were absolutely fantastic. A big shout out to Andreas in particular, because he basically gave me the entire Dodge and Ram range and said, right, Mike, pick one of these to have for a year and we'll ship it from Germany over to you. So there's plenty of these in continental Europe, but as far as I'm aware, this is the only Charger Hellcat widebody in the UK because everyone that does have a Hellcat goes for the Challenger, the sort of coupe version of this. Well, I think this is much cooler. Four door, basically like Dodge's M5. So I went through the list and picked one of these. So I was mentioning earlier that the M5 kind of goes underneath the radar in the UK. People, if they don't see the arches and the M badge and the exhaust, they do just think it's a 5 Series. But this silhouette right here does not go unnoticed. Everyone freaks out at this car, especially in my local area. There's something about that massive gaping intake for the supercharger at the front there the massive wide body arches, little wing at the back. And I think our eyes kind of just become used to certain shapes on the road. And this shape simply does not exist here. So people go nuts for it. And the way that I really know that someone knows exactly what this car is, is when they start waiting for me to drive past and look at the badge at the back. Because once you see that little cat there, you know that this is a monstrous piece of kit. Speaking of which, let's have a look under the bonnet. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most legendary engines of the modern era. I would say the S85 was one of the most legendary engines of, I guess, you know, 15, 20 years ago. This is where it's at in 2022. The fact that you can still get a car in 2022 that has a 6.2 litre supercharged Hemi V8 that puts out over 700 horsepower from factory. And what's crazy is this isn't even the top spec. So that right there is a 2.4 litre supercharger. There's also the Hellcat Red Eye, 
that ups this to 2.7 litres, which means you have 797 horsepower, essentially 800. This one, I think, is rated to 707, although I've seen online that this could be upgraded to 717. They found an extra 10 horsepower somewhere. I need to look into whether my car has that or not, although I must say on the readout on the infotainment, it does say 707, so I'm going to stick with that for now. What's remarkable is the S85 V10 is so bad on fuel that this is actually my frugal daily. This gives me about ooh, low 20s, I think I've had 22 out of it, miles per gallon, while the S85 struggles to get past 19. So if I want to go on an economy run up the motorway or up to Hammond, my 6.2 litre supercharged V8 is the way to do it. My plan is to go nuts with this car. Because we've bought the M5 and it's almost too good and the audience doesn't really want us to do much with it, this is gonna be the scapegoat. So my plan is, gloss black looks cool, but we're going to wrap it and we're gonna wrap it really classy because if you look at some of the challengers kicking about, they're all bright orange and lime green and I think they just look a bit awful to be honest. But because this is the four door, I think we can make this look really effing cool. Then we're going to put on a dyno, take it on the racetrack, get the stig in it. We've already had Hammond in it. By the time this goes up, that video might already be up. We've got this for a year. We need to make the most of it because as I've said in my review video, long termers are normally pot hatches or maybe slightly hot estates, something that's convenient. The world is changing, the chances that I'm going to have something this mental as a daily from a manufacturer is very, very slim going forward. So in 2022, it's going to be the year of the V8 and the V10. So thank you for watching today's video. Um, I'm going to apologise again for the lack of uploads, but trust me, that is about to change. And I hope you like the two new cars on Drive Tribe and now on this channel. It'd be great to hear what you think of the cars and if you have any bright ideas as to what we should do with them, especially the M5, because I'm a wee bit stuck on that one. So any help that you guys can give in terms of creative for that M5, drop them in the comments below and I will definitely read them. That was just a little life update, cars, flat, whole working situation, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again next time.